Hey right, guys, um, Monster Cameron here. I remind myself to look into the mic or the camera. They're right beside each other. I didn't make a mistake. Um, I'm actually might have to move their positioning. But anyway, so I'm writing some code here, and the idea is that it's supposed to help you track your in investments over. Um, a certain period of time so I'll go over some of what I got so far and then um, we'll kind of plan it out from there okay so let's go ahead and comment this out so and get this back in hopefully nothing broke okay so I am not a math whiz like I am terrible at math I will uh, that's my preamble I'm terrible at math I failed math twice I'm beyond mediocre at math. I'm actually terrible, not just mediocre, I'm just legitimately terrible at math. Okay, so here's what the code I have so far. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. So we've got a version here. Um, I stole this one from <clears throat> Stack Overflow. It just rounds to a certain um, uh, a certain um, number, uh, a certain number of places. It's it's uh, it's um, like I'm not like I'm uh, I'm blanking on the phrase right now. Prototypical inheritance or something like that. Prototypical inheritance is just being attached to the um, just being attached to the um, the number object. So any number can access this function. Um, so, uh, so that's just a utility function um, or method. Um, whenever I, uh, whenever I need to do any kind of rounding, which shouldn't be too often. So I, the naming is a little bit weak, but so I have a function to convert um, cash to shares. So uh, could be useful somewhere. Just a an arrow function. Um, and then I have one that converts shares to money. So really simple stuff. Um, and then I have one that says dividend yield adjusted per distribution. Um, so the idea is um, the dividend yield is the um, the percentage of the uh, per share um, um, of the dividends you get annually. So some dividends will do a um, monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, and annual distribution. So you can get the percentages um, of the um, of the dividend for for these uh, distribution um, time periods. Not quite sure if this is going to be needed, but I'm I'm just kind of building out the functions, and I'll build out. Um, uh, I'm trying to make this functional, so I'm just building out functions that we use other functions. And the simpler the base functions are, the easier it is to debug stuff. So derive dividend per share. So you know cost per share, which is would be like if Apple's like five hundred dollars a share, and then the dividend yield. So you know, I think Apple's like 0.7 um, uh, dividend yield per share. So you get. Um, um, you get the, the, the dividend per share and then the total dividend is um, how many shares you have um, uh, let's see what so I think the total so the dividend so this is assuming you got the dividend here from the cost per share so now you have your total amount of shares and you have your dividend Interesting, okay, so this isn't quite right. Oh yeah, no, it's right. <laughs> oh god. Thinking in front of the camera is always the worst. Um, but I'll correct as I go along, so the normal 
the normal method, I suppose, if you're not very familiar with all this stuff, is just brute forcing it until you become more adept. Um, derived dividend total by annual distributions. So the dividend total um, by distribution. And then frequency of the tax. Then um, I have adverbify. <laughs> so it just adds, um, you know, L, like I can use this to add ly to these. <laughs> just a little helper function. Currentify just turns any um, integer into a string with the currency in front of it, pre uh, prepended in front of it, and percentify does the same what it does the percentage behind the value. Um, gross share. Uh, value per year so it um, takes the growth factor or the uh, annual growth rate growth rate and it um, it adds that percentage to the original value and then the growth share over years does the same thing but it does that over a, a certain period of years so here I have some some um, some console output. So, dividend adjusted from frequency. Adjusted from frequency. So let's see how that looks. So frequency right here. Dividend yield adjusted per distribution. So dividend yield is 10%. Distribution is one so that's annually okay okay so dividends adjusted from frequency so if this is 12 distributions so that's monthly so it's about um 0.83% um, per dividend per month and it definitely is being rounded up so if we don't round it it's just a little bit closer um, but I think rounding is fine for now we might have an option to disable rounding And let's see, dividend per share. So dividends per share. So A. Derived dividend per share. So cost for a share is ten dollars a share. And the frequency is once a year. So So the dividend per share per uh, per year is one dollar. So I think the math all adds up, but I could be wrong. I'm going to be definitely researching this, but that's just kind of how I'm kind of building it out. So I'm trying to make it all functional. So no side effects. It's just going to, they're all returning values. And I'm trying to like break each function down into the smallest components so I can um, um, just glue them together like Legos pretty much. All right, so. Let's go ahead and run that one out. So this one I'm able to show the growth of the shares. Um, this is just compound interest. Or compounding rather. So currency Got the currency value here. Should we get it here? Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it international. So um, Actually, I might I might just uh, have options for the currency, like a drop down. I'm gonna try to save this information to local storage, and I think I want to make like a paid option, um, like 99 cents lifetime to um, store it in uh, Firebase. So this is just like the beginning. So I'm gonna keep working on it. Um, 
we don't do a lot of editing on this video because I do a lot of ums and ahs and I honestly don't know what I'm talking about so this is all kind of like new for me but uh, I'm gonna keep going so you stay there So we have our symbols, so AMD, 2WO, AAPL. Alright, so then we have our query. So it goes in our fetch symbol query builder. We pass in an array of symbols and our headers. So all this does is it filters right here. So simple should cache symbol. So it should cache simple. All it does is it checks if it's um, already cached for today's date. I'm using a hashing thing. Maybe the hashing, the date hashing isn't necessary. Uh, but uh, it's a simple system. Um, so I don't know, it could probably reduce the complexity of the hashing thing right here and just keep it to the date. It'd be more human readable. Not that it matters. Uh, okay. So it just checks, um, and if it, it, it pretty much, so if it does exist, um, then it returns um, um, uh, true, but if it doesn't exist, which would be a null, then it returns, okay, I'm, I, I have a flip, so 
if it does not exist, it returns a null, and I'm flipping it, so it returns true, so it should cache it. So all we're doing is filtering out this list of symbols if it should be cached for the day. And if it is, if it should be cached, then it returns um, the filtered array to the fetch symbol query. Now the fetch symbol query, all it does is it checks if there are anything, there is anything in that list. If there's anything in that list, then we join join them with this. Um, um, I can't remember the specific term for it, but it's um, URL formatting. Um, we join it here, and we just create this um, this promise. So we're just generating the promise. Um, so if there are no um, if there's nothing to be cached for the day, then it returns a null. And we can check for that. So this one's going to return the, the, the promise. So then the next is we're going to resolve it. So right here. So we're passing in the query. So we're checking if it's null. We're just going to return early. Um, we're wrapping it in a try cache so we can um, catch it if it's. Um, if something's broken in, it, in in the logic or anything, like that. we can probably just comment this out. And I didn't mean for it to run. So what we're doing here is we're executing the, uh, we're awaiting the the fetch, and we're converting it to JSON. We've um, pulled out the result and uh, the result array and the error object. Um, and then what we're doing is iterating over the results. So we're saying. If um, if should catch um, if it should be cached, then we're gonna clear out the cache, the old cache, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and cache the current one with the uh, hash of the date, um, and then later on what we'll do is we'll get a list of all the um, get a list of all the. Um, all the the symbols that we're following and we just do a split based on this hyphen so what we're doing is we're uh, caching the symbol so what that means is we take the symbol as the key and you know the symbol it's in a template string so the symbol and the hash um, and then we stringify the api object all that data that uh, they send us we just store it in local cache Right. And we store it, and we just log out to a little message. Else, if um, if it's already there in the cache, then we don't do anything. This shouldn't pop up too often uh, because we are catching it at this level. So this is just secondary checking. Um, so that's, that's pretty good. So what I'll do now is demonstrate. So we're we'll gonna refresh. So all three symbols. So if we put application, we can see that we have cached it, and the values are in here for us to pluck out and do some um, um, do some work on. But I'm going to call it here because this has been extremely long. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I'm exhausted. Um, all right. So until tomorrow.